Hello, everyone. Welcome to a special episode of The Crownsman Show. Today, we are sitting at The Forge with William Donnellan. Uh, he is the president and founder of the IRL Group, which does construction. They, they own several pubs, so it's a very interesting setup. We're going to get into some of his backstory about how he ended up setting. I think he's running four or five Irish pubs. Lots to cover. It's going to be a very exciting episode. William, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jared. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, yeah, we're, I mean, this setup for anybody watching knows that usually I got a big headset on so I can never wear my hats. Um, I usually don't have whiskey. It's usually got equipment behind me. Completely different environment. So this is, but I, I guess first off, I just want to give the setup of the IRL group because it is sort of a unique thing that you've got going on. Yeah, as a IRL group, there's basically three different legs. Uh, we got construction, hospitality, and safety. So uh, the hospitality is the Irish pubs. Uh, and I guess the backstory there is uh, my mom's side of the family back in Ireland were into hospitality, mm. Irish pubs in particular. And uh, my dad's side of the family were into construction. So I guess I got a bit of both. So so what ended up, so, so you, now in Ireland, were you involved in both or how did it sort of... Did... I was, yes. Oh, okay. So you've been in both worlds for... Yes, yeah. I actually had an Irish pub in Ireland before I came here. Um, probably from the age of 20 to 25, mm. I had a five-year lease on an Irish pub uh, back in Galway, which is like the west coast of Ireland. And uh, I swore after that that I'd never do it again. <laughs> but uh, here we are. Is it different? Is an Irish pub in Ireland different than running an Irish pub here? I feel like the answer is yes, I'm going to assume. But. It is different, but not entirely different. Uh, I guess the big difference uh, for me was that pub that we had in Galway was in the countryside. Mm. So now our pubs are in the city in Vancouver and uh, different location, different business. I don't have to be there all the time myself. Like mm. uh, I, you, you, you need to be with a country pub out in the country in in ireland you need to be there people come in to see you uh it's all about having conversations right you know uh so it's important that you're there behind the bar pulling the pints yourself the owner that's there. right yeah yes but uh our model here is very different to that yeah it's a different it's, it's almost like uh here in some places it's almost like you feel disrupted if the uh if the owner comes walking up <laughs> it's like they're disrupting the table yeah here uh uh, we have a policy, uh, an unwritten policy, uh, my wife, Laura and I, uh, where we try not to be at the pubs anytime after 6 p.m. You know? Oh, really? Uh, and I find they make more money when I'm not there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I saw you giving out some uh, some little fixing things while we were here already. <laughs> um, did, uh, on the construction side, what was your, on your father's side, what, what type of construction were they involved in? We were into uh, home building, really. Uh, so like single family homes. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we're from the country. So, you know, uh, we even, I guess, uh, ourselves at home, we've we built three or four houses ourselves. Mm. Uh, but typically we'd be contracting. So there'd be contractors working uh, in the area to build homes for other families. I see. So how do you end up? So how do you go from that world to ending up you and your wife, your wife's from Ireland as well? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So you both end up here in Canada and, and kind of Yes. Creating this whole world for yourself. So long story short, uh, 2008, when the crash came, mm. uh, we decided, uh, Laura and I, we just had a conversation and said, why don't we go and travel? Um, I had a construction company in Ireland as well. And uh, we said we'd shelve that so we would freeze that and it would be there when we came back. So we were kind of thinking of Australia because a lot of people were talking about Australia. Then, and uh, Laura, my wife, said, how about uh, we go to Canada? And immediately we both thought Toronto, you know, it's the big city. There's a lot of Irish there. Uh, honestly, I didn't know too much about Vancouver. So um, we were, we were kind of hell bent on going to Toronto. And um, a friend of mine who I do a lot of equestrian, uh, or who I did a lot of equestrian with back in Ireland, he was a surgeon and him and his wife trained here in Vancouver. Oh. So when I told him I was going to go to Canada, you know, we we're going to go for a year. We got a one year visa. we we'll go for about six months. Should be great. Uh, you know, just a bit of a, a change. Change is as good as the rest, as they say. And um, he said to me, Ken was his name. He said, 
will you go to Vancouver first? You know, if you go to Toronto, you'll never go to Vancouver. Right. So I was kind of thinking, oh, yeah. And he, he knew by me, like, he's not going to go to Vancouver. So he was persistent. He kept on to me every weekend. And he convinced me to go to Vancouver. He said, just go for a month and then go to Toronto. You know, it's not going to do any harm. Right. So we went. Well, and, uh, yeah, we went to the start <laughs> of 2009 uh, to Vancouver and we never got to Toronto. Really? You didn't? Yeah. You didn't You've never even went out no, there. And we didn't have, we didn't even have a phone number when we came to Vancouver. We knew nobody. Uh, there wasn't a lot of Irish here at the time. We had no contacts. Uh, so we just came here, checked into the Ramada on Granville Street. Mm -hmm. I walked up and down the streets to try and look for a job. It took me about a month. There was a lot of work going on in Granville Street at the time. Uh, a company called Jacob Brothers Construction, who we do a lot of work with now. Um, they offered me a position and I, I worked on uh, the Granville Street upgrade for the Olympics. Oh, okay. So that's what I done when I started. And so, no thought of moving. Of move, was there even a thought of moving here? No, or no. It was no. just going and checking it out. Yeah, we just we said, okay, we'll go there for a month and you know see what it's like. And uh, came here and uh, we just fell in love with the place. And both of you are just both of you just loved it here. Yeah, loved it. Um, and everybody we talked to, you know, said, you made the right decision. So um, there was no chance we were ever going to leave Vancouver and go to Toronto after that. Right. We just, well, I don't. I mean, we got a huge audience back east. So Toronto is a lovely city. <laughs> I'm, going there, I'm going there actually yeah, for the first time. Imagine I've, I've flown through there a few times, but I'm going there for the first time on Thursday. Oh, are you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah for a few days. It, it actually, you know, we do a lot of events out there. It is a great city. It really I've is. Heard that. I've heard that. One thing I will say uh, about Toronto is they get stuff done. You want to get something going. You know, you and I, and I noticed that in your personality right away. You and I talked on the phone. We met LinkedIn, talked on the phone, and we were we got at it. Yeah. Um, you see that much more back east. So I like that environment. But you can't go to the mountains in Toronto. It's yes. just the, the landscape. It's, just, it's, just, it's not the same. You can't yeah. beat it. Yeah. Um, I, I guess the next part of that is, so how long did you work in, in construction? Did, did the pubs come first or did the construction come first as your own entity? So after about three years here, um, uh, we set up IRL Construction. And uh, that was November 2011. Um, we set up IRL. And... We started doing a bit of construction and it just exploded. We got so busy. Mm -hmm. uh, we went from me on my own to, you know, having a couple of people with me to having five, to having 15, to having 50. And then at one point it went to 150 full-time employees. Uh, typically we would do uh, structural concrete, wood, so formwork and framing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just got busier and busier. I guess the timing was good too. Um, things were really picking up. The Olympics really helped yeah. after the Olympics. Uh, I think a lot of people were looking at Vancouver and right. um, it, it just it just got busier and busier every year. And in about 2000 and I think 2016, uh, I had, I, I just, you know, I, I felt like the place could do with a good uh, Irish pub. Mm. And um, owned by I, an Irishman. Owned by an, Irish, Lauren, owned, by an right, Irishman. owned by an Irishman. Yeah. So I, um, I, Went looking, I went shopping, and uh, my wife, Laura, was saying, you know, we're not opening a pub, you know, we're not doing that again. We've done that before, we said, not, 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 not again. So um, I found a location on Granville Street, uh, and it was, it was really by luck. I was looking at a different property, and uh, the realtor said, you know what, I have keys to another property here. It's like I just got them like five minutes ago. Do you want to go and see that one? Uh, the one I looked at, I didn't really like. So went and looked at it. Um, it used to be the Stone Temple. It's pretty, it was a pretty famous place there on Granville mm -hmm. Street. And uh, I said, this place has got lots of potential. You know, it's perfect, good location, nice size. And um, I said, now I've got to go and, you know, break the news to Laura that I've been mm -hmm. looking at uh, properties and that I think I've found one and that's not going to go down too well. But uh, I asked her, I said, you know, please just go and look at it. I'll set up a view on tomorrow. And if you like it, great if you don't then we'll just that's it we won't talk about it again yeah so uh she went at lunchtime the following day looked at it i was out on site working my phone rang and uh i remember answering it and i thought it was going to be bad news and she said she was very uh, excited and she said that place has a lot of potential you know and i said is that a yes and she goes maybe 
<laughs> and uh, we chatted and then um, we, it kind of all happened from there. So that was 2016. We spent about 18 months renovation, renovating that location. 18 months? 18 months, yeah. Wow. And paying a lot of rent every month. It was, it was crazy. The permanent process was a little slow and it's just, uh, it just, yeah, just took a lot of time. Was that, uh, it was, uh, sorry to jump in on that. Is that, uh, again, these comparison and most people watching will have never maybe even been to a pub in Ireland. So would that process that sort of the red tape, would that be similar to something you'd see in Ireland? Not or, really. Or no, that, no that it, it, yeah, that was new for me. And uh, that was a big, a big learning curve for mm. us because you can imagine uh, if you want to open a pub in Vancouver, let's say on Granville Street, we'll take the Donald Irish pub, for example, because that's the location we're talking about. Okay. Uh, first thing you do is you got to find the property. Then you sign a lease. You can't go renovating a space without having a, a signed lease. Right. You know, so now you're the tenant. So you don't know how long the process is going to take after that. You really don't know. Um, it's not up to you, you know. So uh, we signed the lease, uh, started, um, I guess, designing and started design, layout, all the rest, uh, put our business plan together. And then uh, the permitting process, uh, jumping through those hoops. And yeah, it took, took about a year and a half to renovate space and so did you did you like did you put in a new bar like how much so this is which which pub are we talking we, about this is donnellan's on grand yeah okay. no we didn't put in a new bar the bar was there all along we did put in a new kitchen uh, which is a big one because yeah. uh uh there's a lot of you know it's, it's a big process a lengthy process um we put in a new kitchen we put in a new keg room there was never a keg room there so mm -hmm. cooler walk-in cooler right um and we kind of opened the space up you know, there was a lot of walls there, so a lot of demolition. Yeah. But we just wanted to be... That's that old school style where they used to sort of make everything rooms and things, that's, right? That's yeah. correct. Exactly. So we wanted to open it up and, you know, have a stage there. And, mm. uh, the, there's a mezzanine as well. So you'd have the main bar downstairs and a secondary upstairs with a little mezzanine. So it's it's a great space. It, so I guess um, was at, at month uh, 13, was your wife still phoning you as excited about it? Uh, <laughs> no. What was that? No, process? no. Because it's a big thing for people, though. And yeah. you know, you're a couple, and you're trying to do something. You're in a, you're you're in a, uh, well, not a new country at that point. You've been yeah. there a while, but you know, you're still developing yourselves in this country. That's... And now you're doing 18 months in. You're it's funny that you asked that question because I was telling the story to somebody yesterday, and they asked me the same question. Uh, uh, and and yes, it was. There was some very hairy moments, mm -hmm. uh, and I remember Laura saying to me. At about that time, you know, uh, we're running out of money here, and we don't know how long this is going to go on for. Right. And uh, what are we going to do if we if we can't finish this and we we don't have enough money? Um, and I said, well, I didn't know what to say, so uh, I was as nervous as she was, but I was trying to keep on keep keep the brave brave face. So I said to her, uh, you know what? Worst case scenario, we lose everything and we go home to our family. You know, so yeah. you you go home and you'll be with your mom and dad and your siblings and it's not too bad, is it? And uh, she looked at me and she goes, guess not, you know? So um, thankfully it never came to that and mm -hmm. we kicked on and we were able to get uh, open in 2017, summer of 2017. And uh, this just exploded after that. But uh, yeah, it's it was very a, popular it was, place. It is, it is, it's a great place, but it was a, it was a, it was tough. It's a tough project. Yeah, and then, and then you, I wanna, I wanna jump over to the construction for a second because, um, so that continued so well, this is going on though, that is continuing on. You're getting a lot of work and, and that business, that side of the business is continuing to do well then. Um, it did, I just wanna actually ask your perspective because you're, you're in Vancouver, you have pubs, construction. It's sort of a prime candidate to ask this question about just the housing market here. Is that, has it ever slowed down or, or do you sort of see this has it ever taken a dip since you started it or has it just continued to grow the, the demand just for your business in the construction? It's continued to grow. It's, uh, there's this big shortage of skilled trades here. And uh, even when we applied for our permit to come here, initially, uh, Laura has a degree in business and HR and uh, I'm a carpenter by trade, but uh, she came on my back. Uh, she didn't have enough points to get it, get a visa herself, but uh, 
because let's say it's a, a point system and 100 being the best, you know, mm -hmm. 1 to 100, 100 being the best, and you needed, I'm not sure how many points it was, but let's say it was 65 or 70 points to get in. And uh, I think Carpenters were on top of the list. Like a lot of people, a lot, a lot of uh, native born Canadians don't even realize that Canada is a point system because there was a big uproar in the media in the US once they were talking about doing a point system. And Canadians were upset about it in the US. And I went, we right. are on a point system. <laughs> That's what we do. But it's very good because it protects. It is very it good. Yeah, uh, we get great people yeah, there. Yeah. yeah, it protects a lot of the jobs here, um, which is very important too. But uh, the skill trades were mm. on the top of the list. Mm. And thankfully, um, we were both able to come um, on the back of that. And uh, it, was, it was a pretty quick process to get the visa. Um, we came here. It was, it took a small bit of, a small bit longer than I expected to get uh, a job, but that's because I was sending out resumes. Uh, we call them CVs in Ireland, and I was sending out these CVs, and I was probably calling them CVs, and and people didn't know what they were, and uh, maybe they were going into their junk mail. But after you know a few weeks here, getting talking to the locals, they were giving us advice and tips, and um, even with uh, some local immigration companies, and that they they kind of steered us in the right direction. We polished ourselves up a bit and our CVs, uh, our resumes, and yeah. uh, we sent them out. And um, we were having a small bit of joy then. But what worked for me was I, I got a bit of advice one day to, you know, get a hard hat, get a high vis vest, you know, get on your work clothes, put on your steel toe cap boots, and walk into job sites. Just walk mm -hmm. in, ask for the manager, you know, I'm looking for a job. Um, once they see you, you know, uh, you'll be fine. So. Mm -hmm. I, I did that. I, I put on my PPE one morning about 6 a.m. I walked down Granville Street. I went into uh, 1067 Granville. I'll never forget it. And it's actually straight across the street from Donlan's Irish pub. Wow. And uh, I went in there and I'd done an interview. And a very funny story. I'll, I'll give it short. But uh, the, the gentleman there, his name was Trevor. And he's a great guy. And I, I'm still friends with him today. And he was the project manager there for uh, Jacob Brothers Construction. And uh, he was asking me all these questions, you know, and uh, he said, are you, are you a dog fucker? And I said, yeah, I am. I am, yeah. Because I thought that was like, you know, that, <laughs> that meant that you, you work hard, but like I'm fresh off the boat. And uh, anyway, he starts laughing at me and he hired me. <laughs> <laughs> so he told me later, and we always, we always joked about that. But uh, I worked with them for um, about a year. They were a great company. And... Uh, uh it's another funny story i guess i got my um my t4 in the in the mail uh, after being about a year with them i was going back to ireland for christmas for the holidays and uh they take it they were they were a bit slower uh in the winter time around the holidays so they said you know oh yeah no problem go back for whatever whatever you want two weeks three weeks i go back and have a great time i come back to vancouver and i go to my apartment down the west end and i see my t4 but I didn't know what a T4 was. So I thought it was like, uh, basically, you know, you're finished with Jacob Brothers uh, and here is your tax form. Like you're, you're terminated. So I was shocked. Showed it to Laura. I said, she's, you know, I think that maybe there's no projects coming up or I don't know what's going on. So I, uh, my truck that I had with uh, Jacob Brothers was back at the yard. I didn't have, really bother going back there. I started looking at some jobs. I got a job out in UBC. Uh, on a concrete, yeah, on a concrete project, and um, I was there about a week when Trevor called me up and he said, uh, "When are you coming back to work? You're going to stay over there in Ireland, or what's going on?" And I said, uh, "I'm back." This is the best story ever on the show. I said, "I'm back. I, I have a job. You know, I, I got let go." And he's like, "What? You got let go?" I said, "Yeah." Uh, he said, "No way. He said, let you go." So uh, I said, yeah, I got my T4 got in the mail. And he's like, you idiot. <laughs> Everybody gets them at the end of the year. That doesn't mean, you know, in Ireland, we call it a P45. So right. he said, that's, that doesn't mean you got terminated. You know, that's for your tax return. You have to do it every year here. So I was like, oh, my God. Now you are because you've been gone. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, well, I'm with this company. They're, the owner's really nice. They're under pressure. I can't leave. I'm running a crew. Uh, you know, if it doesn't work out, I'll go back to you, I promise. So it did work out and I stayed with that company and then I set up Ireland after that. But uh, right. if that hadn't happened, and I, I'm a big believer in everything that happens for a reason, I have no doubt that I'd still be working with uh, Jacob Brothers today that's because they were a great company. Yeah. Right, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. 
<laughs> um, and it's okay. So then you 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 start to open your own. Um, was that was that a hard decision, or was it just there was a demand you you knew to, to go into the construction business for yourself? It wasn't a hard decision. So I I bought a vehicle, and I had a I had this kind of uh, agreement with myself. Whereas you know, every time I get a paycheck, I'm going to buy something. I'm going to buy a tool. So mm. uh, when I get my paycheck, I'm going to before I go off and do anything silly and, you know, waste that money, I'm going to buy a, a skill saw, you know, and when I get my next one, I'm going to buy a chop saw and the next one, I'm going to buy a drill. And the next one, I'm going to buy a table saw. So I started doing that and I built up a collection of tools and uh, the plan was always to start my own gig. And I done that after, uh, as I said, about three years here and I had a, I had a nice collection of tools uh, built up and I started doing some side jobs. So I was still doing my, my, I guess, uh, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. daily, uh, five days a week. And then in the evenings and on the weekends, I would like build decks for uh, different uh, businesses downtown, mm. um, patios, uh, stuff like that. And just got busier and busier and busier and busier. And then came to the point where I had to, you know, say that I'm going to finish up here and thank you for everything. And I just took the leap and, and started IRL. Wow. Well, and then now jumping back so um and it, it it's nice to hear you talk about you know your wife and that sort of the process you and because i when i went to your website i don't think you knew the picture was up there but it's you two laughing together so it's it's sort of right the first thing people see is sort of you and your wife together and looking like you're having fun and so it sort of stood out to me seeing that and then so now we're here you've got you've got the, the first pub you've got the construction company it took 18 months did she suggest the second, third, and fourth pub, or did you suggest the second, third, and fourth pub? <laughs> I I did, but uh, I think when uh, she seen that we were, you know, we were um, operating Donlands, it was going pretty well. Uh, that that was a bit of comfort, you know, mm. that it it wasn't as nerve wracking, I guess, second time around. You know, we right. had the template, we kind of knew how. Uh, things were operating and uh, we it was in 2019 um, I approached the owner of a uh, location down in English Bay mm. uh, it used to be called Shamrock Alley it's called Shamrock Bar and Grill now and it was a great little place a little Irish snug we call it so like mm. a small little Irish pub and uh, great community neighborhood pub um, great people around there great customers and uh, it's it was just a place that I liked to frequent myself, you know, and it had that uh, had little Irish twist to it. And, you know, I always said, you know, someday maybe I'll own that. So I talked to the owner and um, he was the Eastern European and uh, he said, it's not for sale, you know? So I was joking with him. I said, sure, everything is for sale, you know, at the right price. And he was like, no, 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 you know, I'm not interested in selling. So but if you ever change your mind. So I uh, kept on to him. And uh, we'd meet every now and again for a coffee and a chat. And um, eventually he said, you know what? I'm ready to retire and I'm willing to, to sell. Mm. So, but he said, I've got a couple of partners and I'm going to have to talk to them and I have to figure things out. It might take a while, but uh, uh, it all happened in December, 2019. First um, of December, 2019, we took over Shamrock Bar and Grill and uh, the place just exploded. We done a renovation brought in some new staff, changed the menu, and uh, it just took off. Um, shortly after that, things shut down, unfortunately, but we were doing so well, we weren't entitled to get any subsidies. Um, so we, this is, everybody knows the period of time we're talking about, this is everything. Like people can't go into bars and restaurants, it's just everything. That's this right. Is all, this is all, well, I mean, you're not a takeout place. This, this, no, that place. but thankfully uh, there were, some adjustments made to uh, the regulations here and we were allowed to do mm -hmm. takeout and we're in such a great location they're close to the beach so right we we could we could do a bit of takeout where, where everybody could actually go it's yeah places like the beach yeah exactly so it, it was a tough time no doubt about it but uh we we continued to ride the wave and we made more money during that period than the previous owner made uh before mm -hmm. that so we we weren't entitled to any subsidies, but uh, at least we were heading in the right direction. Did um did that some did some of that stay? Now that like that takeout menu that you developed and that 
did that now that things have come back has that now added on and that people can come back but you're still can or did you go back to the original business model uh, we more or less went back to the original business model but we still offer takeout and mm -hmm. some people do come in we do little picnic boxes mm -hmm. where you can buy a little picnic box uh, for two and you can get a couple of cans of beer right. and a sandwich and a few bags of crisps yeah. or maybe a bar of chocolate yeah. and people enjoy that they come in they grab a picnic box they go to yeah. the beach yeah yeah and then okay so now you're up to two now number number three number three yeah where we're sitting right now um smiths of gas town so um we purchased uh this location from sean heather uh so it used to be the irish heather which mm. is a very famous location i think it's been in gas town for 23 years i think and at this location maybe for 18 and now it's in chinatown but we purchased this from sean um about a year and a half ago and done a big renovation as well uh during that time it was it was a very uh it was business was slow uh we were shut down and we, then we then we were open then we were shut down again but uh sean you have a little buy low uh so high yes, <laughs> yes. so yeah people were saying to me you're crazy you're yeah. you know you're getting into pubs when they're being shut down you know uh are you sure you're doing the right thing here there were great opportunities, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I said, uh, said to my wife, you know, I'm thinking of uh, purchasing the Irish Heather off Sean in Gastown. And um, what do you think of that? And she said, well, it's a beautiful place, great location. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got, um, it's got a lot going for it. So she agreed, you know, let's do it. So here we are, uh, number three. And um, we've done the deal. Uh, we've done... Uh, quite a substantial renovation and we opened our doors uh, a little over a year ago and uh, it's been doing really well um gas town uh was hit very hard there's no doubt about it mm -hmm. a lot of the look at the cruise ships had stopped yeah. there's something like 273 cruise ships come in here each year and i believe each of them leave about three million dollars to the local uh neighborhood here the local communities and businesses and hotels and stuff like that so to not have that uh for a couple of years was very very tough yeah. um and a lot of the local businesses really struggled but it's nice to see that it's bouncing back now the cruise ships are back mm -hmm. it's pretty vibrant out there but we still have a small little bit to go you know it's not back to where it was it may be at 75 percent 80 percent but it's still still got a ways to go so this room we're sitting in though this is called oh sorry the the, the name of the main pub is smith's right that's right. Yeah, and that's and that's sort of uh, tied to your mother's name. Yes, right? yes. So my mom's maiden name was uh, Smith. So uh, they were in the hospitality, as I said. So uh, this is the third Smiths in three generations, actually. Wow. My grandfather, my uncle, and now uh, myself. That's awesome. But the first two were in in Ireland in Dublin. Wow. Yeah. So it's 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 uh, it means a lot to us, and um, we don't really get into projects anymore unless you know we have that. Uh, personal connection right. because life is short and i'm a big believer in you know don't don't get into it unless you're going to enjoy it and mm -hmm. if you don't enjoy it and you're not having fun i don't uh, it's very hard to make it successful yeah. you know you're not going to give it 100 percent. and if you don't give a new business 100 percent uh it, there's a good chance that it won't work out yeah and then other things in that you're tied up and can also start to suffer if you're not enjoying it and yeah it all sort of has to mesh together yes exactly yeah. And uh, you know what? One of our biggest strengths is the fact that we have the construction leg as well. You yeah, know? that must be huge. Yeah, so we got pubs, but when we take over new locations, we're not now trying to engage a contractor who's going to say, you know, well, I can't do anything for six or eight months. Yeah. And now you're paying all this rent. Double over, and over budget. And yes. Under time. Exactly. So that. at least we can start. Uh, yeah, we can do it at cost. Mm -hmm. We can start our design process and just we can get the ball rolling. Like you little change immediately doesn't disrupt after the entire project when you yes. go oh we got to do this so the table yes. needs to be a little bit out beyond, yeah you know? we like to move quickly mm -hmm. and um because time is money you know so we like to move quickly and to be able to make those decisions um quickly it saves you a lot of money especially when you're building out pubs mm -hmm. and then what's this room we're sitting in here right now this is the forge um, that's, that's correct now it's attached to smith so yes yeah so it's uh it's a uh, kind of a a hidden cocktail whiskey bar out uh, the back of Smith's. It used to be uh, old stables, actually. These are real old stables. Um, 
That's, that's what here. this room is? Yes, yes, they were stables one time, yeah, a long, long time ago. Wow. Um, and then people would probably know it as uh, the Shabin. So at the back of the Irish Heather, there was mm. a very famous whiskey bar. It was the number one whiskey bar in Vancouver, actually. And it was called the Shabin. And uh, that's the room we're sitting in right now. And we rebranded it and we call it uh, the Forge. And it's a very, very Which popular. Which is a great name. One of my yeah. favorite names. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it's very popular. Um, Conor McGregor has a bar called the Forge now, but we named ours before he's. So just getting that out there. Just getting that uh, out there. Yeah, good, he, good. He, he, he uh, has one called the Forge in, yeah. uh, in Dublin. But um, we rebranded, renovated the space, and it's, it's, uh, it's doing really, really well. A lot of um, private parties here, birthday parties. Um, you know, staff events, Christmas parties, yeah. uh, corporate events. Yeah. So it's, as you know, as you can see, it's a beautiful space. Uh, it's a good size yeah. and uh, people just love it. And they like the fact that it's hidden out the back. It's kind mm -hmm. of exclusive. Oh, you walk in here and you're like, yeah. this is what I'm looking for. Yeah. Yes, Nobody really knows what's here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a really cool place. Um, I noticed that you, you know, when I met some of your staff and I noticed a lot of them are Irish, um, is that, I mean, I'm sure just, you know, being Irish, you end up, you know, knowing that the other Irish people in the community and that, um, but it must add, it must add a little bit to people that come and there's, you know, you're at an Irish bar with actual Irish people working and talking to you. It, it must add a little bit. Or, I'm sure not all your locations are like that, but um, that must just add a little bit of, I, I guess, flair for, for lack of a better word, to just the experience of people coming here. They it must does. appreciate it. It does, it does. Um, and yes, all of our pubs are like that. Oh, are they? <laughs> uh, and we don't specifically look for Irish staff um, because it's Irish owned, Irish operated, and we've been doing it now for um, over a decade. Uh, I guess the word has filtered back home and people will contact you from Ireland. You know, I'm coming mm -hmm. over or I've run this hotel or I've run this pub for you know so many years and they've got right. lots of experience. And we're, those are the people that are applying for the jobs, but we don't specifically look for Irish. Um, but when you get somebody that's, uh, you know, fits the criteria and that's really good, has, right. has the experience um, and they're Irish, that's, that's a bonus, yeah. I guess, because yes, it, it is an Irish pub. Have you been able to, uh, have you been able to share the culture back out into the community? Have you, you know, got a chance to do anything with your bands, like set up like, little things or anything that just sort of, um, because you said when you when you first came here, I don't know how much the Irish culture was here initially, but have you kind of got a chance to build into any of it? Yes, we. One that comes to mind immediately is Celtic Fest. So on March seventeenth, St Patrick's Day, this year, for example, uh, Celtic Fest um, were set up at the Art Gallery in Vancouver. So we brought down our mobile pub there, mm. Donlan's Irish Bar. We call it the Wandering Tap. So we brought it down there, and uh, what a great name. It was it was it was so much fun. Um, it was on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The Saturday for it was it was the main day, and uh, the weather was this was beautiful. It was dry, and we sold thousands and thousands of pints of of, of stout there. So um, that was fun, and it's lovely to yeah be involved in those type of community events and um, be able to give back as well. Yeah, we're very very involved in the local communities at all of our locations. Um, we do a lot of sponsorship deals and we've got a lot of partnerships uh, in particular with sports teams mm. um, and just uh, non-profit societies. Yeah. We, do, we do lots. We probably have about 25 or 30 partners right now active. You know, I, you know my, wife, my wife is from the Philippines and I always, you know, when you go back there and you can just see like she lands and you can see there's this comfort. Uh, of growing up there and I'm, I'm sure you you just got back from ireland for a wedding i believe right that's right and and i'm sure you have that same feeling that you know this is me you know you get back to ireland it must be a, so what can you sort of do you can you identify the two different feelings that this is your home but that's your home you know like that what is that because yeah. i've always lived I've, I've lived in canada i moved to, to vancouver that was the biggest move i ever made so yeah. I just, I've stayed here and it's hard for me to imagine. I love going to visit places. It's really hard for me to imagine uprooting everything is living in a different country. How does that attachment to both sort of feel for you and, and maybe your wife as well? Yeah, I think uh, it's a good question. I think home will always be home as in Ireland because um, I spent most of my life there. You know, 
that will likely change in the next yeah. in the coming years. Hopefully, but <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> but um, I was just home and uh, spent uh, a little less than two weeks there, and the weather was fantastic. Uh, it was 31, 32 degrees, which we don't typically see in the summertime in Ireland. And um, you know, it, it was it was a perfect trip, but yet it was nice to arrive back to YVR and to feel like you know. I, I can't wait to get back into my own bed. I can't wait to get home to see my wife and our newborn son. Um, I brought our two younger sons with me. So it was lovely for them. And I, mm-hmm. and I really enjoy doing that, bringing them home to meet their cousins. Uh, they're out in the countryside. You can open the door and let them off. Right. And they can have lots of fun and, you know, leave them out there for an hour or two and come yeah. back in when they're tired. And that's the way we grew up. So yeah. it's nice to be able to do that, to go back and do that. However, um, coming back to Vancouver, um, it does, it, in, in recent years, it feels more and more like home. Mm. You know, uh, I think when you purchase your own home and uh, you got so much going on here, um, it's more so looking like home now. But mm. uh, Ireland, I guess, will always be home to us and maybe it'll be our second home. Yeah. But um, no, uh, Vancouver has a very, very special place in our heart. As I said, we came here for six months and here we are 14 years later. Yeah. And uh, you know, we have no plan to leave Vancouver anytime soon. And uh, we may never leave Vancouver. We may go back to Ireland to retire. We may not. Yeah. Uh, we don't We don't spend too much time thinking about those things. Mm-hmm. And then one day at a time, you know, right. see what happens. But Toronto is not. Toronto is not. Gonna, no, no. <laughs> you're not going to go there next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, I'm there just for the weekend. But uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing yeah. it because I've I've heard some great stories about it. We have lots of staff that work for us who have spent a lot of time in Toronto and you know they rant and rave about the place so I'm sure it's going to be fantastic yeah I'm going to I'm going to wrap up with one last thing that I I just I don't want to miss out on it there I, no two things the the bottles that we have behind us um and and just your just your hobby quickly um the, the horse riding I just want to touch on those two things so first what are these um what are these bottles because I know they were specially made for for you so yeah so, so this about. is as it says on the bottle right there this single cask was specially selected for Smiths of Gastown. So this is a, a bottle of whiskey from Writer's Tears. Um, Bernard Walsh is the owner there. And Brian Hogan is uh, the, the senior sales rep. And um, Brian and Bernard were over a few years ago. I, I, I'm thinking maybe 2018. And I asked them if they could, you know, uh, if they could do a special cask for us. And they were like, well, we haven't done that before. And I was like, yeah. well, that's even better. You know, and uh, now I wanted more. Um, but <laughs> they said, you know, uh, Brian said, I'll ask. I'll ask Bernard to see what he says. And he asked and they said, you know, we'd be willing to do that. So it took a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money. But uh, the cask arrived about um, maybe three months ago. We got 274 bottles out of the cask. And um, there they are in the whiskey lockers behind you. Yeah. All locked up. But um, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's a single cask that was specially selected for us and there's no other in the world like it. That's awesome. And um, we, we don't advertise it or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's uh, something that we would give out to very special clients and um, we do tastings every now and again. And it is quite different uh, to the original Writer's Tears, but it was a very cool project and yeah, it was lots of fun. And it was yeah. something that you do, you know, once in your lifetime, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's an experience. I um, and then uh, just the so when you when I came down here to talk to you the first time about doing this interview, uh, you you mentioned fox hunting, and then you said I was thinking because I, I hunt myself, I was thinking, oh, we mentioned fox hunting, we are just going to get lit up. <laughs> but you were quickly tell me you actually do it's humanitarian fox hunting out here, and I think it's Abbotsford you do it in, right? Abbotsford? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, Alder Grove. Sorry, not Abbotsford. Uh, so. Yes, we have kennels out there with a bunch of hounds. And in the winter time, from about uh, September, we'll be getting ready to go. Yeah, we'll do, hold we'll, up on the comments, don't attack yeah, them, listen to we'll, what we'll, we'll start off. <laughs> we'll start off what we call cubbing, where we go out and just uh, kind of start training the younger hounds. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, it's totally humane. And then um, we call it drag hunting. And uh, then it goes from October, typically, to March. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh in the winter months and um it's so much fun the, the the valley out there is so beautiful so you can imagine 
you go out there and you let out the hounds and you know they're howling and you're on a horseback going across beautiful BC. The pictures are amazing. The, yeah, and, and coming on so much different wildlife and uh, it's just fantastic. It's yeah. it, you know you leave your phone behind you, you get a chance to switch off, and it's it's so popular now. Um, the club had more members I think last year or the year before than they've ever had in about it's almost 50 years old but uh, yeah we drag around the scent so somebody goes off uh, ahead maybe 10 minutes before we leave mm -hmm. and what we will do is we'll get fox urine and we'll spray it on the horse's yeah. leg and uh, they go off on horseback and go across country wherever they want nobody knows where they're going and then we send the hounds out after them and the hounds get the scent and they think it's a fox yeah. and they start howling and off they go and we have to try and keep up. So we will do that for about two hours on a Saturday, uh, as I said, from about October to March. And, you know, it's hard enough initially to get people to come out to, uh, ex you know, to experience that, especially uh, riders who are used to riding in rings and they think their horse might go crazy. Yeah. And um, we don't know what we're going to encounter, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, you are going across country out and let's say the, the so you're doing some jumps and all that. Oh, yeah. Stuff, yeah. Lots of jumping going through rivers, lakes, steams, or streams, whatever you come across, you know, if the hounds go there, you got to be able to keep up with them. Yeah. So you could be jumping wire even. And um, yeah, so we, we, uh, we do that and we try and encourage people to come and we have three different levels. So there's like a first field, a second field, a third field. Oh. So if you come and you're not comfortable, you can start in the third field. And as you progress, you can move up to the second field. The first field would be the fastest. Yeah. And uh then uh, you'd have a field master for each field. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm typically the field master for the first field. So if you're a very comfortable rider and if you have uh, done this fox hunting before, then you can ride in the first field. If not, we suggest that you start on the third field and you work your way up. The third field is basically, you know, walk, walk and trot um, and an introduction and you learn all about hunting. And then when you're comfortable, you can you can move up. We'll have to get you out. Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you have to have a horse? Do you, can you rent horses? You can I rent horses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can rent horses. So that's great. There's a, a few stables out there in the valley that rent horses and um, they're well used to going out hunting. So um, they're what we call bomb proof and mm -hmm. uh, they're lots of fun. But anyone that does it, I always warn them. I'm like, be careful because once you start, you won't be able to stop. I, well, that's the one thing I'm concerned about and, and getting laughed at with my Western. <laughs> I, I grew up riding Western. So there'll be a style that I will bring to the riding for sure. Yeah, it, it's, you know, it's just fun. And uh, yeah. as you said, you know, some people will slate you, but you, when you explain it to them, they're like, okay, cool. You know, yeah. nothing's getting killed. We're out there having fun. We're yeah, it's basically nice. socializing and yeah. uh, networking. You know, you meet great people. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've made so many great friends this year for the first time in probably a decade. We're going to have a, our hunt ball down at the Terminal City Club in October. So that'll be huge. We'll have about 300 people there. Um, and we'll just have a big, uh, like a black tie affair. Yeah. Have a dinner and some dancing and some live music and some raffles and uh, just bringing people together. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Uh, William, thank you so much for letting us sort of set up in here and, and talking with us. You kind of did the open book thing where you just ask questions and have fun and enjoy the interview. So um, I know the audience is going to, and I do appreciate your time. Thank you. You're very, very much. welcome. It was an honor. Thank you. thank you. Okay, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Um, the, we, we covered a lot of ground, you know, the different pubs, um, you, you know, the horse riding, RRL group. Um, so all of that, if you just drop into the description below, uh, you will see links to everything um what a great uh, you know it was a great time to discuss everything with william and uh, hopefully we get to do more of them thank you everybody for watching we will see you on the next episode of the crownsman show